how tight you have to be in order to knock the ball down or intercept the ball or whatever. And so it just, it just takes a lot of time with these young guys uh, in all aspects. And, you know, and, and uh, these offenses, you know, they're scheming different, you know, take this guy and run him all the way over there, take this guy and run him all the way over there. So, you know, now they're faced with a lot of other things as well. Uh, all right. That was, uh, that was Mike Zimmer talking about his rookie cornerbacks and just how, how difficult it is. If you are a rookie cornerback facing quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson, et cetera, welcome into purple daily Mackie and Judd Declan is pushing buttons and you can find us on Apple, Spotify, and scorenorth.com in audio form every single day. And you can also find us on our YouTube channel. If you're listening to the podcast right now, youtube.com slash purple daily podcast. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and or uh, who has given us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple. It is very, very helpful um, as we look to spread the word about this show. So our goal here this week, we know that it's been a crazy week, the election, everything. Our goal this week is to give you a little bit of an island, a reprieve. If you're a Vikings fan and you're just looking to be entertained and you want to get away from discussions about the elections, um, we're going to be that island for you here. Now, we are very much uh, anxiety-ridden and uh, drinking extra drinks in Corona Hard Seltzers on the side, but we are here <laughs> to talk about the Minnesota Vikings. We're going to start off. This is the Wednesday edition powered by Corona Hard Seltzer, spiked sparkling water, four delicious flavors, and uh, and you can pick up a case at any of your favorite local liquor store establishments. Uh, Judd Zolgad has brought to the table. Every Wednesday, we do the State of Kirk Cousins. And uh, we throw out different trends and nuggets, and we talk about like the Vikings' most important player. Judd has taken it to another level today. You actually have a blueprint for how to solve the Kirk Cousins problem that we're going to dive into. I want to play a soundbite first, but Judd, is that a fair way of saying this? You have found yes. a solution. Yes. The problem. I found an out. And this is a little bit of foreshadowing. Dex, this is Steve Young talking yep. about the... Uh, okay. This was from the Monday Night Countdown crew, and he was talking about Jimmy Garoppolo and, and basically yeah. his future being over in San Francisco. Can we get to a place where Kyle Shanahan, this innovative offensive coordinator, one of the best in the, in, in head coach in the league, can find a quarterback that he can trust and just be expansive with rather than protect? And I think that's been the issue with Jimmy. And I think that $25 million and a shrinking salary cap with this injury, let's bat, bat, bat it around. But I just don't know how Jimmy ends up being the quarterback for the 49ers, Nick. Interesting. Yeah, and keep in mind... Interesting. That that is former 49er great Steve Young, who still lives out on the, the West Coast. I believe he's a practicing lawyer these days, who I'm guessing has a lot of intimate knowledge of what that team is doing and probably wouldn't throw out names because he probably knows the names. Steve Young's a lawyer? Yeah, is a lawyer. that true? Oh. I believe he's a lawyer. Yes, I believe he's a practicing. See, he see, might be practicing. And Declan, lawyer. you rip BYU quarterbacks. Eh? Oh, <laughs> Steve Young's incredibly <laughs> smart. guy in here, BYU. Lots guy. of concussion problems, but a very smart man. But that's good foreshadowing for some reckless speculation. Judd Zolgad, take it away. Okay, two parts here. One is, the disclaimer is this. We have been talking about and theorizing about how the Vikings can sever ties with Kirk Cousins for how long now? Two months or so? Three months? Well, some of us for about two years. Okay, but, yeah, but yeah. Like, like most recent. But we have been, on, on this show, we have been throwing out that idea. And I think we've been doing a lot of pointing out the problem too, right? Exactly. Oh, he but can't, you know what he we can't have come not back done? Before, he's not mobile. He makes too much money, et cetera. And you know what we have not done, but what this show does really well? We have not told you, the listener, what the solution is. You want reckless speculation? Oh, Jim. You know this thing will happen. How about Jim. reckless trade speculation? For the love of God! And personally, I pride myself on not only having ideas that some fans think are crazy, but then to tell you, no, it's not, and here's why, and here's how it can be done. I will share the blueprint. And so today, for the first time, on any station or in print, I believe we're going to become the first place to give you the blueprint for severing ties with your disappointing quarterback. Let's do this. I've got All the right, document right bad. here. Glasses are on. Let's title this, How Bad Does Kyle Shanahan Want His Man? Okay? And, and just to reiterate, this is not being pulled out of thin air. Kyle Shanahan, according to John Lynch, two years ago when the Vikings signed Kirk Cousins, two and a half years ago, was devastated. Yes. Because his idea was to reunite with Kirk from their Washington days. They have a connection. 
He loves the fact that Kirk can throw an accurate deep ball. Mm -hmm. And Kyle Shanahan thinks, much like Don Cooper with the White Sox, he sees some things in Kirk Cousins that he can unlock. And and the Steve Young soundbite that you played at the top of this show to me basically confirms that the 49ers have identified their guy, but they're not sharing it publicly. That's unfair? Reckless. Becky. Because Steve Young basically said, Kyle wants a guy who he does not have to plan around and basically mold an offense too. He wants a guy who can step in day one, who knows Kyle, and can run Kyle's offense, all right? Mm -hmm. That is Kirk Cousins. Here's how it, it works. I've got a four-part plan that adds basically a fifth part at the end that I did some research on yesterday that makes what I'm about to tell you realistic. And I might even say if the Vikings are smart about this and put their ego aside for one day, probable. It's great. Number one, Garoppolo himself, Jimmy G. All right. He, he has tweaked or hurt his ankle th on three separate occasions this year and come out of games. And it appears that he is going on the IR list very soon here. It might be as soon as today. And his season won't be done at that point officially, but it probably is done. So there is a case to be made that Jimmy Garoppolo has played his last down, that he is done not in the National Football League, but as a member of the Niners, all right? Mm -hmm. He has, and this uh, part of the topic has been broached before, he has no guaranteed money left on his contract. And if the 49ers cut him pre-June 1st, it is a $2.8 million cap hit with $24.1 in cap savings. So it's a no-brainer to either cut or restructure. It gets better, possibly. If they sync it up with a post-June 1st trade, and remember the date, post-June, if they sync it up, and it'd be a little bit heartless and ruthless, but it's 2020. Who cares? <laughs> oh, yeah. It drops the cap hit, Phil Mackey and Declan Goff, to 1.4 mil with $25.5 million in savings in, in a year where the cap is going to drastically come down. So you're saying if they wait till June 1st to actually pull the trigger they save a little bit more to the cap. Post June 1st. Okay. Yes. So you could, in theory, you could agree in principle on a trade. Oh, I'm, right? go, I'm going there, Okay, baby. sorry. Continue. That's exactly right. And, and, just to take this off the table, I'm giving you what the 49ers get by releasing uh, Jimmy G. He's not coming here. So this is not the so the plan is not a swap. So this is you're not looking to make Jimmy G a Vikings quarterback. You're just looking to make sure that the 49ers have room to absorb Kirk Cousins' contract. I don't think that the Vikings would have any interest in taking on Garoppolo. Not at that money. I think they would have interest like if it was draft a rookie and if Jimmy Garoppolo was just available for like nine million dollars, I think it would be worth but we can talk about that later. as long as that does not get in the way of the grand plan, Aaron Rodgers is Vikings quarterback eventually. <laughs> okay. All right. Point two now, on to Cousins. If the Vikings work a trade for Cousins dated post-June 1, so this can be agreed to now, March, but the trigger can't be pulled, and that's absolutely fine until post-June 1st. It is a $10 million hit in dead money, all right? But they save 21 mil for 2021. Okay. So, so, so Cousins' cap figure for 2021 and 21 is 31 mil. So you take a $10 million hit, you save 21 mil. Okay. okay. So that's part two. What about the 2022 part of the contract? Uh, I believe once it's off your books, it's off your books. So but if you, okay. So if they were to cut him. Yes. Then, then it, yes. But if you trade him, you are taking the immediate acceleration of what I just gave you. Mm -hmm. And then he's gone. And then the 49ers would have to owe him whatever the money is for 2020. Yeah, that's where I'm uh, going. One in 2022. Wait for the end. I'm sorry, that's, I'm where sorry. I'm, that's where I'm going to drop I'm the really bomb on you. Right that's now. where I'm going to drop the bomb. <laughs> All right. Point three. Th this gets a little bit into the weeds of the 49ers' current cap situation. But their current active spending, as projected uh, by the folks at Over the Cap for 2021 for the Niners right now, is at 151.5 million. Cutting Garoppolo would take that down to 127.4. Okay. Oh, wow. So they're accounting for Garoppolo in that total next year. Yes. If if you if you use if you you go with the figure of San Francisco saving 24.1 mil. So that would be him being let go in March. Okay. 
San Francisco already has $7.2 million of dead money for 2021. So let's say that goes up by $10 million more. But nonetheless, nonetheless, if you do this correctly, if you put Cousins' projected cap hit of $31 mil, and this is where I'm going to circle back to, and this is where it becomes very, very important. If you put his uh, projected cap hit of $31 mil for 2021 on the 49ers' books, we are now back up for San Francisco's purposes to 158.4 mil, which is still under the projected salary cap, which could be as low, but it can't go lower than 175 mil. And that doesn't even include like other roster moves they Correct. could make, restructures to free up money. Bingo. And they would still have enough money to sign a free agent or whatever it is that would help them. Bingo. Now, here is the addendum that I checked on yesterday and was told there's no real reason why you couldn't do this. And this is where it works. Oh my God. And this is why, this is why, call me crazy. But this is why my game plan, if I'm Zim for the rest of this year, is Dalvin left, Dalvin right, Dalvin up the middle, and Kirk, you're going to throw the ball about 13 times per game, and I almost don't care if we win or lose. If you make him so miserable, and you know he's going to call Kyle, he probably talks to Kyle right now, almost certainly. But, if you make him miserable enough, there's nothing that stops you from telling Kirk, have your agent call San Fran and rework your contract. Yeah, so you, you could just give them permission so everything, to have those conversations, right? Yes, so everything that you asked me about 2022 is off the table because if he wants out bad enough and can be reunited with Kyle Shanahan, he will take a new contract. And so if you're the 49ers, this is, all right, is there another step to this? Um, Not really. So these are the That's steps. That's the most okay. important step. So the steps are basically Jimmy G is, you can get rid of Jimmy G very easily if you're the 49ers. It sounds like they're kind of done with them. They're, like, he's injury prone. He's yeah. They they had him wrapped in bubble wrap in the he's playoffs last year. He's not their QB year. too. Like yep. he's not their guy. Uh, Cousins, the Vikings, they'd have to eat $10 million by trading him, but you know what? That's better than eating like the $40 million by keeping him. Mm -hmm. So so that's all. 49ers cap situation is not terrible. Vikings is terrible. Uh, becomes less terrible if they trade Kirk Cousins. Yep. And then uh, if, if you gave Kirk permission with his agent to negotiate some sort of like a three-year deal or whatever with San Francisco, a restructured deal, you can make it happen. So I think most people are going to ask, well, that's great for the Vikings. <laughs> cool. You can save a bunch of money and get rid of Kirk Cousins. Why in God's name would the San Francisco 49ers want to do this? And I think that's a valid question to some extent, but you have to you have to understand this is a coach in Kyle Shanahan that now has quarterback beer goggles on mm -hmm. because they've built the rest of their roster to be a Super Bowl contender. They've had some injuries this year and those injuries have kind of derailed them, but they're still playing tough football in the best division in the NFL and they've, they've been missing defensive pieces. It's a well-coached team that probably still has a win now window. They've got a couple of interesting uh, wide receivers and skill position players. So from, from the perspective of why would you want Kirk cousins? Like, yeah, like if you've been watching him in Washington or Minnesota, you're kind of sick of him, but Kyle Shanahan, despite being around him all the time in Washington loves Kirk cousins, correct? The San Francisco 49ers are desperate for a more consistent, better quarterback whether that's a reality or not with Kirk, it doesn't matter. If the mirage of Kirk, much like the Vikings saw two and a half years ago, yes. exists for San Francisco. Yes. So let's get past the, well, why would they want Kirk Cousins? No, Kyle Shanahan likes Kirk Cousins. Bingo. If you can sell the mirage of Kirk Cousins, you can save cap money. It's probably a win-win because Kirk then goes to a more win-now roster yep. while the Vikings still sort of you know, work their way back to relevancy in 2021, 22. I love the idea. It makes sense. It's worth the phone call and it's not a pipe dream. It's I think the it's, only team it makes sense for. Yeah. I mean, like people are saying, well, what about Dallas? Well, Dallas, no. they're, they're more likely to just bring Dak to punt and on they this don't season want and bring Dak back next year. Exactly right. No, this makes perfect sense. This is, so I'm, I'm trying to think of a parallel to this ventriloquist. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Right. So if you, bring me a really cool doll, I'd be like, okay, this is great. And I put my hand up its back, but I don't know how to talk while having my mouth closed and he talks, all right? Kyle Shannon. Yeah, can you guys talk with your mouth closed? <laughs> no, I, no, I can't. Hey, guys. But I mean, these guys. Oh, see, yeah, Kirk Cousins. I can't, it's not that, man. But the guys who are good, like their mouths don't move. It's just incredible, okay? 
Shanahan, his perception, right or wrong, in life is that Kirk Cousins is a puppet. He doesn't see Cousins as a person. He sees Cousins as being able to execute the offense he wants perfectly, okay? So he says, give me Kirk. I can put my hand up Kirk's back, and I can make him talk. It's a little creepy. And it's going to, well... It's weird, but yes, but it does work. <laughs> but it works in the sense that that the reason why San Francisco would make this trade is because they think that Kirk can execute their offense perfectly. And I guarantee you that Kyle thinks, and Kirk has probably told him, I'm not being used exactly right yeah. with the Vikings. Dude, there's, uh, it just I, makes a ton of sense. I love this too because the Vikings have been in this exact situation twice in the last 12 years. The Vikings were in this situation 2008 going into 2009 where you've got a win now team your defense is good and if everyone can stay healthy you just need a quarterback to help you get to the next level well 2009 the Vikings found one of the greatest of all time in Brett Favre and we all know how that ended but it was it was the right piece that brought them into Super Bowl contention right uh, and then again two years ago the Vikings went to an NFC championship game and they just didn't believe that case could do it a back-to-back year I think they were right on that assessment and they said listen we got the defense Best in the NFL. We mm-hmm. got a couple. We got Diggs. We got Thielen. And we just, Kyle Rudolph, we just need a good quarterback. Not even a Brett Favre, but just like a good quarterback that can sit in this car. That's what they thought. Now, they they were wrong about a lot of things with Kirk. Because ultimately, like, Kirk could drive the car at noon against the Lions. But it was hard for him to drive the car in prime time against the Seahawks, the Patriots, etc. When the pressure was high. So, again, there's probably people screaming at us like, you guys, why, like... Kirk is who he is. Like, why would the 49ers? Because when you are desperate, when you have the rest of your roster intact, and the only thing that you're missing is competence at the quarterback position, Mm -hmm. you look at those quarterbacks with beer goggles, and you tend to reach and make moves and do things that you otherwise wouldn't. Pay more money. Brett Favre made a million dollars a game 12 years ago with the Vikings, right? So if they think, all right, we just need a quarterback. What are our options? Well, I'm sorry, but like, you're not going to get Tom Brady. Like, he's with Tampa Bay. Like, you're, are you going to trade for Aaron Rodgers? Um, what are your realistic options if you're San Francisco? Now, maybe you explore an Aaron Rodgers thing, but your realistic options are probably guys like Kirk Cousins yep. or a rookie that you draft in the first round. And if that guy isn't ready to win right away, you've missed your Super Bowl window. But I love this. This Ky- is a great, great Kyle, layout. Kyle loves Kirk because Kyle has in his mind the code to Kirk. Like, this is all about Kyle. I I guarantee you, this guy is a really good offensive mind. He is great at uh, calling plays. He does a lot of things well. But his blind spot is going to be the hubris of, I had that guy. He knows exactly what I want. What you need to do if you are the Vikings ASAP to get rid of Kirk is to exploit the overconfidence and hubris of Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. That's I mean, that's how this works. So I, that's why you can't, to, uh, to your point, Phil, that's why you can't call up Dallas and be like, well, you need guys, take him. Because they're going to be like, why? Yeah, they're already paying a ton of money at that position. It's like D- Dak is, if Dak comes back, they'd rather just probably franchise him anyway. You yeah. want reckless speculation? Oh, you know this ain't gonna happen. How about yeah. reckless trade speculation? Uh, Dex, how would you rate Judd Zilgad's four-step plan to bring Kirk Cousins to San Francisco or send Kirk Cousins to San Francisco and free up that quarterback spot in the money? Uh, as a scale of like one to 10, 10 being it's the genius, most, the, the the smartest, best plan I've ever heard, and one being the craziest thing I've ever heard. Yes. I think it's I, I think I think it's probably about a, a seven. I, I, I wow. think I, I think it's actually plausible the way Judd lays it out. I don't think it's a slam dunk how it can nope. happen, obviously. I, I think it, I, I'd be crazy to say it's a 10. But there is a realistic path to doing that. It's just basically, can the Vikings understand that they're just going to have to swallow some money? And it's and it's more of like Judd said, and he obviously laid it out beautifully there. But ca- can they understand that like you're going to you're going to lose a lot of money on this? But how much can you lose? Do you want to lose forty, or do you want to lose like ten to twenty? Yeah, and that's a no brainer to me at this point. I mean, it's just. And it's, it's less of a knock on Kirk at this point. And it's more, and by the way, I do knock Kirk and I think all those knocks are valid, but it's, it's more in the way you can even frame it up to him and be like, listen, man, we all see what's happening here. I mean, it's where we got 15 rookies running around where we got rookie <laughs> cornerbacks. We got a rookie left tackle next year. And we're just in, we're in transition mode here and you're 32 years old. So thank you so much for everything you've done here. Really appreciate it. doesn't even have to be contentious. Just hey, no. or contentious. Just thank you so much. 
Um, guessing you probably want a team that's more ready to win a Super Bowl right now anyways, right? Yeah. So why don't we let you have a conversation with your old friend Kyle? And the Vikings took a shot. Like, they did take their shot. It's just gone now. Yep. I love it. This is great. Um, we should definitely keep pushing this and, uh, it and, works. and stay out in front here. It is our obligation on Purple Daily to be the thought leaders for the Vikings front office, damn it. We've just we've just fixed your problems with Kirk Cousins. How uh, just to, to to keep talking on this trade front here. So the trade deadline did pass yesterday, and uh, the Vikings wind up only making the one move over the past week, trading Unique Ngakwe for almost all of the picks that they sent initially to get him from Jacksonville. How do you guys feel about the fact that they didn't pull the trigger on a Riley Reef trade or a Kyle Rudolph trade? They just they just stood pat this week. I'm a little bit surprised. I would like to know uh, with, with the cap going down. And we don't know by exactly how much, but certainly going down in 2021, I would like to know if there were conversations that didn't go places. If the Vikings won that game on Sunday and said, well, I mean, those guys are playing pretty well. I, I guess my question is this. If you took players to the market and tried to trade them and basically were told I, either no and, and or, yeah, I'll take Harrison Smith for a fifth round pick and said, no, that's fine. Um, if you were swayed by the win at Green Bay on Sunday, or worse, the, the talk about in the past couple of days going to an eighth playoff team in each conference, yeah. then that's really dumb because everything that you did or are doing should be based on 21 and 22. So without knowing what the conversations were, because I wouldn't look when, when it comes to Thielen or Smith, I'm not going to just say, oh, yeah, I'll take a fourth round pick. That being said, if you pull guys off the market because you um, improved a two and five or said, what if we can get that eighth playoff spot? Then I'm upset because you're not that good. And everything I think that you uh, do right now should not be being concerned about the 2020 uh, campaign, Declan. I think it should be being concerned about your future. And I think you also have to understand that like, of all the four major sports, the NFL trade deadline is like the weakest and it, and it's, it's all, it doesn't really provide much of fun, crazy trade speculation. That's not to say that the Vikings probably shouldn't have maybe pulled a trade for a Kyle Rudolph or a Riley reef, but even someone like Desmond King in, in the chargers, who's a very good, uh, I would say a pretty decent cornerback and obviously a punt returner too. You only get a six round pick for him. So the Vikings were probably wise to just say like, all right, we're probably us as fans too. We're probably overvaluing how much Riley reef would really get, on a trade market. And then you also have to factor in with the COVID protocols and people having to sit out and, and get tested and all that stuff that didn't help. So the, yeah, I, I would love for the NFL trade deadline to have more reckless things like we see in, in the MLB and hockey and, and NBA, but it's just, it's not a sport where you can just plop someone into a new system and all of a sudden expect immediate results too. So it's just, it's, it's a very complicated process, but I, I yes, I would have loved to see a trade here, but I, I'm not surprised nothing went down. Yeah, and I'm I, I'm more interested in in there's a couple guys specifically one in Riley Reef, the guys that you probably aren't going to have on your roster next year, and and what you would be able to get for them in a trade this year. So Riley Reef next year, his cap hit is 14 million dollars, which would make him in his early 30s the fourth highest paid player on the team. Yep. And they just drafted Ezra Cleveland to be their left tackle of the future. I know he's playing right guard right now. Riley Reef, if the Vikings cut him, they can save $12 million to their already crippled salary yeah, he, cap. He ain't coming back. He's not going to be on the team next year. Right. And, you know, unlike like when, so the one thing I was thinking about is, all right, well, you know, you can get compensatory picks if you let free agents walk sometimes, right? Like Trey Waynes goes and signs with the Bengals and the Vikings get a fourth round pick for 2021 mm -hmm. as a comp for Trey Waynes, Mackenzie Alexander, they get a sixth round comp pick and Anderson day who even got him a seventh rounder. So you're not talking about second round picks here by any means. Love America. But, um, but like when you lose decent free agents, you get like a mid round pick but in Reef return. Won't get you that. He won't because you have to cut him Correct. to save the cap money. Correct. So in a situation like that, I'd love to know what they had on the table. Right. There's other guys here too, like Anthony Barr, you're not going to trade this year because he's hurt, but I think there's a chance he, you could save like $9 million by cutting him next year. Yep. Um, Kyle Rudolph. So you'd save $5 million to the cap by cutting him, like guys that you would potentially cut next year to save money. Why not trade them? Yeah. Could you have gotten a, you. a third round pick or something? What would the what if it's a sixth round pick for Riley Reef? Like, what are you what are you holding out for? And that's Build my draft cap. And that that's what concerns me. If they looked at that Packer game and and we're like, yeah, we won that game. No, 
No, it's fine, but make trades. Um, so yeah, if they had, if for like a reef or Kyle, if they had an opportunity to make a move and didn't, then that's dumb. Here's another one. Harrison Smith has, I believe if I'm reading this right on uh, spotrack.com, the Vikings. So they owe him $10.2 million next year for a cap hit. Yep. Uh, there's no dead money. So they either need to, so Harrison Smith, I don't think has any guaranteed money left on his contract. He'll restructure. So right? I, I would, I ideally, now that they haven't traded him, you restructure that thing. Yeah. Now, if somebody wants to offer a first or second round pick, I'm listening on anyone over the age of 29 years old. Agree. Uh, but that's another one. Like what, what is the plan here? Are you what, like Riley reef? Especially is he, he better be on the team next year. Like, why would you not have traded him? What are you going to do? Cause we need him for the lions game. Phil, I guess we got to have him for that lions game against Ev. Oh my God. So, um, so anyways, uh, the Vikings make no more trades. They make the one with the Ngakwe, and now they're, uh, they're going into the off season when it eventually hits in a few weeks from nine to what, two months from now with no second round pick and just the first round pick. I was so excited. I thought, I, yeah, you, we'll you get at least get one deal. It'll pick. be great. You got to get a second round pick. You're not, you're not in a situation as a franchise where you can only have one pick in the first two rounds. So anyways, you guys want to jump into our. Oh yeah, pigskin pecking order. Oh, 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 where I we get... rank the top ten teams in the NFL every Wednesday on Purple Daily. I doled out some harsh punishment this week, <laughs> gentlemen. Harsh. Judd Zolgad, you start us off. Out of my rankings, probably more interesting than what I'm going to reveal in my rankings. The Rams are out, mm -hmm. and they'll probably come back in. I'm not mad at the Rams, but here's the one I dropped out entirely. And you know what? Bleep them. The Green Bay Packers. Ah, wow. You're out. You are out when you can't tackle against the Vikings. And look, Dalvin Cook was great, but you couldn't tackle. You were at home. What was that? You were supposed to be number one or I don't know. I, I think they got as high as like four for me previously. You're gone. Green Bay Packers are out. Number 10, the Buffalo Bills, six and two. Um, beat the Patriots finally, 24-21. Not ranked last week. Buffalo back in. Buffalo will probably uh, drop out again as well, but that's fine. Number nine, and a plus 62 in point differential. They beat the Lions 41-21. Oh, led by Phil Mackey's favorite quarterback of all time, Phillip Rivers. My God. The yeah. Indianapolis Colts at 5-2, and two, not ranked last week. I, I think I did have them in a couple weeks ago. Anyway, they are number nine. Dude, Philip Rivers slinging it you know around what? the yard. And this you know season, what? Baby. Good for him. Dude, he, he seems was... like such a likable guy. Have you seen his last two games? I know. So he's averaging 300 <laughs> yards and three touchdowns in the last two games. On the season, my guy, Philip Rivers, 70% completions and a passer rating just under 100. Not bad for a guy who literally throws it like Uncle Rico having a spaz attack. Do you know how bad he looked in like week three? Listen, it just takes him a little while, okay? I mean, or, did, did he get that thing? Yeah, ones. what happened to his shoulder? <laughs> uh, it's been shot for 10 years. Dropping two spots yeah. from six to eight. Uh, they lost to the Bengals, 31-20, are the Tennessee Titans at five and two. So they go from six to eight. Moving up from 10 to seven, the Saints, who beat the Bears 26-23 in an ugly football game. Uh, the Saints are sneaky. The mm -hmm. Saints are sneaky. I can't decide. I think the Saints might be really, really competitive here. Um, they, they did not get off to a great start, but they're five and two. They go from 10 to seven in my rankings, moving up three spots, even though they had a bye week and you know what? They probably took the place of the dumb Packers. It's my club guys, Kyler Murray in my club at number six, wow. the Cardinals five and two Cardinals are five and two. Now my top five dropping from three to five. They lost, but they lost to the Steelers, but Lamar Jackson to Dex's point last week is not playing well. It's really sort of odd. Mm -hmm. Um, the Baltimore Ravens, five and two. They drop from three to five. Moving up one spot after a much too close for comfort win. But as I said before, if you win in this league, you win. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers go from five to four at six and two. My top three then are Seattle going from four to three. Pittsburgh stays at two. And I'm sorry, I know it's boring. And they just beat the Jets, but the Kansas City Chiefs, seven and one. I still believe they are, even though the Steelers are undefeated, the best team in this league. So I go Chiefs, Steelers, Seahawks, Buccaneers, Ravens, 6-10, to 10, the Cardinals, the Saints, the Titans, the Colts, and the Bills. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, I feel like 
I feel like there's a line that sort of goes across like the top four, maybe five teams in the NFL, and then the rest are very much scattered. I think you are exactly right. So I have also, I will admit, I was overzealous in my Packers optimism uh, in this particular segment. I thought the team we watched in the first month of the season was Super Bowl ready. As it turns out, you can drive a truck through their run defense. And Aaron Rodgers is a front-running great quarterback. When he falls behind, he gets all weird body language guy. And I'm punishing the Packers by moving them out of my 10. So wow, second guy hey, to do wow. it. Yeah, out I like to hear that. Good for okay. you. I've also moved the Rams out temporarily just because, I don't know, I feel they'll be back in at some point. I got the Dolphins knocking on the door. The Dolphins like have that. a bunch of ways to win. Their defense is good. I, I thought about that. Tua kind of brings them to a new level, I think, with mobility. So, uh, But they're out too. So number 10, the Cardinals. Kyler Murray, it's, it feels a little smoke and mirrors-ish, but when you have weapons and you've got Kyler Murray and uh, he's able to to bring the bring the team back in the fourth quarter, which I'm jealous of, uh, they're number 10. <laughs> number nine, my guy, Phillip Rivers, and the great defense of the Indianapolis Colts. Number eight, the scrappy, pecky 49ers. I know that they're reeling at quarterback, and I know that they just got beat, but I just like that team... Uh, the fact that they're even like in the mix in that division and and hanging tough is a testament to coaching and roster. So I've got the Niners eight. They probably drop out at some point. Number seven, the Titans, another plucky team. Number six, the Buffalo Bills. Again, a little smoke and mirrors. Their defense is kind of a disaster, but um, boy, they're dynamic when they want to be offensively. And Stefan Diggs is just a he's a perfect fit there. I thought it was. I didn't think it was going to be a great match. I thought that uh, Josh Allen wasn't going to be accurate enough, but he's proved that he can find Stefan Diggs. Number five, the Ravens. Number four, the Seattle Seahawks. And again, I wouldn't fight any of these four teams. If you wanted to rank them number one, I wouldn't even fight you. Yep. Uh, I think all four of these teams can win the Super Bowl. Seahawks at four, Buccaneers at three, Steelers at two, and the Chiefs, number one team in the NFL. They're back number one. They they have played an exhibition game against the Jets and got right. <laughs> and uh, they were and look great. So Chiefs, Steelers, Buccaneers, Seahawks, line, Ravens, Bills, Titans, Niners, Colts, Cardinals. Dex. All right, you boys convinced me. I originally had them at 10, but I've kicked them out. I made a last <laughs> yeah, minute. Get them out of here. The Green Bay Packers are out of my top 10 power <laughs> rankings. I originally had them at 10. I, re- I still thought, all right, there's enough body of work, even though um, with power rankings, you go with more just the small sample size of what have you done for me lately. But the, the way they lost to the Vikings, dude, I thought Aaron Rodgers was going to kill them without – um, without having any cornerbacks for the Vikings and Aaron Jones being on, I thought it was going to be a field day. It wasn't. It was one of Zim's most uh, brilliantly called games. Go, Pat, go! What is it going to take to get out of this defensive purgatory that we can never get right for some reason? Are there any grown-ass men in this front office that are going <laughs> to take this team to the next step and get us into that prime defensive territory if we keep throwing draft picks on? Keep it up, Green Bay. Keep it up. Uh, number grown ass men in that yeah, front office. Not on defense in the front office. Need some front grown office. ass men. Front office. Uh, number ten for me. Kicking things off is the Tennessee Titans. Um, obviously, they 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 just lost this week, but I think I think in general that Titans team is very good. I think we are all very much wrong on that Titans team. Ryan Tannehill's playing very good. Excuse me. I was mostly wrong on 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 the Titans. I won't loop you guys into my crazy takes. I thought the Titans were coming down to earth, but they're Declan's like 10. we we were all wrong on John David Booty. Uh, uh, we were all wrong on Josh Freeman. Whoa. Kevin Cobb. Uh, yeah, Joe Phil, Burrow Phil's wrong is Kevin really Cobb good and, too. You guys. <laughs> yeah. Joe Burrow is a really good quarterback. Uh, next up for me, number nine is the Arizona Cardinals. They're coming off a bye week, uh, but I think Kyler Murray is is still a very dynamic guy, and and DeAndre Hopkins is there. I'm, I've been very my impressed with what uh, what they're doing, and they're Judd's club. club. So I gotta my have my quarterback Kyler as number nine. Uh, the Buffalo Bills are bidding up on some cupcakes right now. Um, I, I I I think some of those Josh Allen stats are a little bit inflated after his like insane first three games, but they're still a good football team. And Stefan Diggs, I I still got mad love for him, so so they're number eight. I have the Colts as number seven, and I think honestly they are the most underrated team in the NFL. They have done a phenomenal job. Xavier Rhodes is playing very well again. Rhodes are now indeed yeah. closed. Philip Rivers. <laughs> Like I I I, th- I was I was a judd I I I'm not number one Philip Rivers guy like Phil Mackey but I used to love me some Philip Rivers back in the day I thought the guy was cooked no these this this Colts team's pretty damn good still room on the bus still hey. room on the bus well there's not a lot of room because Philip Rivers kids are also on the bus but there's That's some fine. room on the bus a plus sixty two is no joke right the Colts are a plus sixty two That's really damn good. Mm-hmm. 
I have the Ravens at number six. It's just Lamar Jackson stock is falling. And I mean, it, it's pretty insane because I think most people had them as the second best team in the AFC just behind the Kansas City Chiefs. And they're now probably third. Or at least they're on my list. They're the, they're the third best AFC team on this list at number six. So I have the Saints at number five, a little closer for comfort against the Chicago Bears. But like Judd said, I, I don't think they're as good and they're probably past their like insane dominant window, but they're still a very good football team. But I think it's still a crowded NFC. So they're number five. The Bucks for me are still four. And it's in it's in the similar vein as the Saints as that game against the Giants should not have been that close. Like you almost lost to Danny Dimes. Brady's had the couple <laughs> meltdowns with he forgot what fourth down was. I can't put them. I can't put them in my top three yet. I just can't. And also, you know, my vindictive uh, nature with Tom Brady, him being cooked. I'm, I'm keeping them outside the top three, boys. I can't. He's, do def- it yet. he's definitely not cooked, not cooked, but he is cooking. He's cooking. Much he's like Russ is cooking, Tom he's is cooking. He's about to get Antonio Brown as his number three wide receiver, too. That'd be interesting. So look out. Can't wait for that to shipwreck the season. Uh, Seattle Seahawks are <laughs> number three for me. Russell Wilson is uh, still a very good quarterback. Chiefs, number two. And I, I got to go with the Steelers. You're the only undefeated team, man. So And, and that's, that's the beauty of power ranking. So the Steelers are number one. So my list goes Titans, Cardinals, Bills, Colts, Ravens, Saints, Bucks, Seahawks, Chiefs, Pittsburgh Steelers, your number one team. Football. <laughs> Who, All right. Who do you guys think represents the NFC in the Super Bowl right now? Uh Buccaneers. I got a weird feeling it might be the Saints. If honestly, if we get a if we get a championship weekend of Buccaneers, Seahawks, Chief Steelers, and we get Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, yeah. and we get Big Ben and Mike Tomlin against Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes inject it into my veins and I don't care who comes out and plays in the Super Bowl. Like think think about those potential matchups on championship Sunday. I feel like Seattle's going to surprise in a disappointing way because that defense is just not that good. It's mm-hmm. not, but at the same time, I hope I'm wrong by the way. Let's say it's Tampa Bay versus Seattle. The things that Tampa Bay does to some teams, which is fluster, you know, quarterbacks in the pocket. Yep. Russell Wilson is the kryptonite to <laughs> front four pressure. I just feel like the so, Sa- I feel like the Saints are bubbling up here. Yeah, like in a they're, weird they're def- way. They're definitely it's just a un- gut feeling. They're under the radar. Um, they're under the radar, and Michael Thomas has been out for like five weeks. Yeah, that's so. A- once they get him back, at some point, if he is, comes is that just back. an injury, or is there something else more than that? There's more. Something yeah. else happened. There's right? more. I yeah, thought- he. Yeah, in, in in fact, he got. Uh, suspended for a game like three weeks ago or two weeks ago because he punched the same guy that the Bears receiver who just got suspended. He punched that same guy in practice. But then I think he yelled at Sean Payton. Oh. And there's some weird dynamic there. I'm just... The, the Saints basically... I want to say Payton told those guys that they didn't have to do like um, work in the spring and summer. Like they didn't Zoom. They didn't do a thing. And so they they just got like to training camp and started mm-hmm. to practice. And I mean, that's a lot of time off. And it's sort of like they're percolating up. I don't know. The, the conference is weird because there are some good teams and some fun teams, but I don't know that I see a clear cut team. I agree. Seattle should be. Seattle should be, but that defense is not there. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Those are your peg, uh, pigskin pecking order rankings and also the solution to the Kirk Cousins contract problem as presented by Judd Zolgad. Thanks for hanging out with us on this episode of Purple Daily, and uh, it'll be a little bit easier to find some things for tomorrow's Purple Positivity Thursday, gentlemen, because the Vikings actually have a win under the belts. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you guys.